Welcome to our lecture online. Let's now talk about the simple harmonic oscillator. But before we do that at the quantum mechanic level, let's take a look back at the old classical model of the oscillator. So here we have a graph that represents the potential energy of the oscillator. And of course, we can then think of a, a mass with mass m on a spring with spring constant k oscillating back and forth in such a way that the potential energy of that oscillator can be represented by this graph. So at, at x equals minus a, at the maximum extension in one direction, the maximum energy is one half kx squared, but of course if x is equal to a, then we have one half ka squared. That's the maximum energy contained within the oscillator. When we come back to the other direction, when we reach the maximum distance, the maximum energy again is one half ka squared. And anywhere in between, the potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. At the very bottom, when the potential energy is zero, that's when we have the maximum kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Now what we'll notice is the equations when we're dealing with the, the harmonic oscillator at the quantum mechanic level, they use the equations slightly differently and sometimes that gets confusing. So here I wanted to show you the equivalence of the two equations. Notice we can also indicate the maximum energy as one half m omega squared a squared. You may wonder how can that be possible? How can one half k a squared be equal to one half m omega squared a squared? Well, it turns out if we start with the equation that the potential energy is one half kx squared and omega of an oscillator is equal to the square root of k over m, k being the spring constant and m being the mass, which also is equal to two pi times the frequency. Notice then omega squared can be written as k over m or k can be written as m times omega squared. Omega, of course, the angular frequency. Then if we replace the k in our equation here, with m omega squared, one half k x squared becomes one half m omega squared x squared. So a very different kind of look, but the very same equation. Now, the potential energy can therefore be written like this or like this. Now the total energy can be written as the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And notice we use E for the maximum or the total energy when actually it might be more sensible to write it as E max. Sometimes we forget that E stands for E max and really means the total energy of the oscillator. So it's the kinetic energy combined with the potential energy. And yes, this is a kind of a strange way to write potential energy, but that's how we do it. Now, if we go and look at one half mv squared, and we solve for one half mv squared in terms of the total energy and the potential energy, we can write the kinetic energy in terms of the total energy minus the potential energy. And then if we solve this for v squared, and then eventually for v, we now have an expression for the velocity of, uh, of the oscillator as it's oscillating back and forth in terms of its mass, the total energy, and the angular frequency, and the position of the oscillator. Now we come over here and we want to talk about the probability of finding the particle, the oscillator, at some value for x. And we know that the probability times dx, and dx of course is a small segment of where it might be, is proportional to that dx divided by the velocity. Let's see if that makes sense. If I take a small region, like right here in x, and I want to know what's the probability of finding the particle there, it's going to be proportional to how wide that dx is, and inversely proportional to the velocity. The faster it moves, the less likely I'm going to find it there. The slower it moves, the more likely I'm going to find it there. So I would think I would have a higher probability of finding the particle at the end point, where it's moving very slow, versus find the particle here, where it's moving very fast. Now, if the probability is proportional to dx, however wide I make that slice, divided by the velocity, and I have the velocity defined like this based upon my energy equation, I can then say that this is a good representation of the proportionality between the probability of finding a particle of an oscillator and the equation in terms of its mass, its energy, and its angular frequency, and its position. So we're going to need that when we look at it from a more quantum mechanic perspective. Now, the difference is, and that's a really big difference, that in the classical model, all values for energy are possible. In other words, there is no potential or there's no particular place here 
where we cannot find the particle and there's no particular place where the energy is not possible. In other words, all values for the energy is possible. We're going to find that, just like with the, with the uh, finite well or the infinite well, that there's certain values for energy that can simply not exist for a small particle. And we're going to find the same thing when we talk about the simple harmonic oscillator in a quantum mechanics setting. And that's up on the next video.